looks like the patient is all prepped for surgery. Mr. Nobody, um, before we begin, just want to make sure that you are completely prepared for this because this is an experimental procedure. There's no guarantee that this will even work. And there is a small possibility that it may not even recover from what we're about to do. So just want to ask you one more time, are you sure you want to go through with this? Okay. You know, part of me is really amazed that that worked. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't add that part in. Let's talk about the issue that I'm seeing. Now, under heavy recoil, like what we saw with the uh, Winchester Defender Plus P's, what is occurring with this Atlas Toolless Guide Rod is that this catch is catching on the reverse plug during the recoil cycle. Now, I think there are two potential solutions to that, and it has everything to do with how this catch is pivoting in the toolless guide rod. The first issue is what I believe is that this spring that is located close to the pivot point, it comes back to dealing with leverage and leverage with fulcrums, is that this spring is located too close to the pivot point. Therefore, this amount of mass is overcoming the spring pressure that is being exerted on this side and it is not able to compensate during the heavy recoil cycle to keep it from catching the reverse plug. So solution one would be to move this spring over closer to or farther out, allowing for more leverage and the spring able to compensate for that extra mass that is located towards the front of the gun. The other way to look at this is that there is too much mass right here for the spring that is being used. And the spring could be the, the heaviest spring that it could be in order to fit in here, I don't know. But the other solution would be to take out material out of this area, which is what I'm actually going to do. To be able to remove this material, I have to set up this part in a certain way. And I have it locked down onto this block with some screws and a nail. So th therefore, while I'm drilling out most of this material, it shouldn't move. It should be pretty secure. And I'm gonna use a little mini drill press to do that. My concern when I was drilling this out, I was going to put a second hole in right next to it, but the space is so limited and my second uh, small pilot hole basically was pretty darn close to this main hole that I had just put in and it just deflected enough and it won't grab. So what I'm going to have to do is take my Dremel with a carbide bit and I'm just going to remove the material that way. So I'm sure we'll speed it up or, or something so you don't have to watch or listen to this thing going unless you're into that. A little bit more to do. And there we go. Now, the question is, will it function with the Winchester Defenders? I think there's only one way to test that out. All right, guys, so made it back out to the range and we are going to see if the modification that I did to the Atlas Toolless Guide Rod is actually going to run these Winchester Defender Plus P's. They're the 124 grains. They're one of the ones that have been really giving some problems to uh, the guide rod and uh, how it just locked back under recoil. So 
we're gonna go ahead and give her a shot and see if this was a win or a fail. So I'm kind of curious to see what happens. Yeah. Here we go. Nope, not enough. But it seems better, so it must be close. Eh. Now it wants to do it on every one. I think I have a little more tweaking to do. Might be a little bit difficult to see here, guys, but this is where the pivot is. This is the spring location. And then if I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna probably split the difference between the catch hole and the spring hole on where to put this guy. So that's yet to be determined. I might have to drill it out and see if I can compress the spring because the other thing that you have to think about is the further you move it out this way, the more that lever compresses into the guide rod in order for it to catch the reverse, the reverse plug. So whether it'll give enough compression to be able to do that, I don't know, that might just be experimenting. But I'm gonna start with just taking more material out, being cognizant that I don't weaken this too much. Granted, there, this really doesn't have a whole lot of pressures that are pushed on it. It's just basically finger pressure to operate this catch part. So, but I, I don't want to totally compromise it, which I don't think I would. And here we go. You know, if I was smart, I would have taken a before and after picture. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop right there. So as you can tell, definitely more material has come out. Now, let's see if we can figure out this whole uh, drilling a new spring hole location. Location, location. I thought I hit record, but apparently I didn't. Um, I have the guide rod chucked up into this vise. I got a parallel underneath it to support it to try to keep it as level as I can to the cutting bit. I'm trying to do some black magic voodoo here. I have an, a carbide end mill that's actually ten thousandths of an inch too small for what I need for the spring. So I'm using it, or I used it to set my depth that I want in for the spring hole. And now I just need to widen it just a little bit. And unfortunately, my 1 8 uh, drill bit is a, a, little, a little dull, but maybe I can make this work just to uh, widen the hole just ever so slightly. Maybe it being dull will mean that I don't go deeper than what I should. Cobalt drill bit to the rescue. All right, so you can see my extra hole. It's that shiny one. Now I just gotta clean this up and uh, see if I can compress the spring. All right, so got everything put back together. The new spring location is definitely a lot, there's a lot more force that's uh, being exerted on it. So we'll see how this uh, works. We'll, we'll take it back out to the range. You know, five, six, seven more times, it should work. Good morning guys, it's the next day and I'm actually out at the untrained, unprofessional shooting range, which it's kind of nice, it's like coming home. 
The other place that I was shooting, too many people leave trash and stuff there. It's just, I, I don't like going there unless I have to, but finally dried out enough that I could actually use this again, which is fantastic. I've already collected some of the brass, you know, that I've left in the snow and the mud, you know, from this winter. And it's kind of like seeing old friends, but uh, let, let's talk about what we're doing. We are going to be trying out <laughs> my latest batch of mods and, this is uh, pretty much my last shot at this because I don't know what else I would do to it. Today, we're gonna be doing the Winchester Defender 147s. And I'm doing the 147s because I bought the 124s and the 147s and I shot the 124s yesterday, which seemed to be more successful than when I originally shot them under the last part of the mega test. So I think I am super close. And uh, the reason why I didn't go out and buy more 124s is because, you know, it's like this stuff adds up and gets pretty expensive. This box was like $32.99 plus tax and same with this one. So uh, support me on Patreon. I'll do a more dignified Patreon deal here in just a minute. You know, you should know by now that being an untrained, unprofessional, I can't do anything that is more professional. So this is the best I got. Support me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash nobody training. I'll put a little link in the description below. Just copy, paste it and pulls right up. But anything you can do to support me, that'd be greatly appreciated. This stuff is kind of expensive and you know, it's like, I don't expect to make a living off of this, but if you enjoy the content and kind of get something useful out of it, or you just want to see if I eventually do something stupid to myself, support me. Keeps me on YouTube longer. I appreciate it. Now, you may be asking why I even bother going through and doing all this tinkering and stuff on this, and why can't I just live with it the way it is? Well, one, I just can't stop tinkering. I, I really think I have an addiction to tinkering. It's really fun. But the other thing is, is I tend to overbuild things. You know, so if I were to build a deck, I would build it a lot beefier than what most builders would probably do just because I'd rather overdo it than underdo it. And the same is with the old crap gun. I want to be able to not only run whatever I want to run in it, but I also like to have a fail safe in there. So it's like, even though I'm not maximizing its full utility, I, I like knowing that I can. So it's just that added insurance. So that's my twisted logic behind the whole thing. So let's go ahead and try and see whether I should do a victory dance or if I should just hang my head in shame for uh, not accomplishing my goal. Which I still think I did pretty good. Okay, final test of the Winchester Defender, 147 grain in the oh crap gun to see if my mods actually work. Zero or hero. Here we go. Yeah, I have no rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> 